Welcome to Lesson 5, Configuring Your Web Application. Configuration files are used to define profile properties, store connection strings, configure debugging, define default error pages, and store a host of other settings that control how ASP.NET applications behave. Their primary purpose is to store the settings that you do not want to store in your compiled code. Web configuration is stored in a file called web.config. The web.config file is an XML text file with a root element of configuration. Now, ASP.NET uses a system of configurations files that is hierarchical. At the top is the server's machine.config file, then the server's web.config, the application's web.config, and subdirectories can also have their own web.config files. The ASP.NET Website Administration Tool is a standalone web application for modifying your web configuration files. You can open it directly from the IDE by going to the Solution Explorer and clicking the ASP.NET Configuration button that is on the toolbar. It's also possible to programmatically read a web.config file by adding the system.configuration namespace. Because your web configuration files contain sensitive information, such as connection strings, they must be protected. ASP.NET automatically protects configuration files from being accessed over the Internet. If anyone tries to browse to a file with a .config extension, they will get the forbidden error message. Therefore, it's very important that you do not rename your uh, backup files to things like web.config.backup because they would no longer be protected. Instead, it would need to be web.backup.config. That way they still end with the .config. In this tutorial, you use the ASP.NET Website Administration tool to update the application's root web.config file and programmatically read from that web.config file. The lesson requirement for this tutorial is that the ASP.NET Website Administration tool must be installed. It is installed by default, however, it is possible that it has been uninstalled for some reason. The hint for this tutorial is that you can use the ASP.NET Website Administration tool from the toolbar of the Solution Explorer window. To start this tutorial, select New Website, ASP.NET Empty Website Template, and enter Lesson 5 for the name of the application, and finally click OK. Double-click the web.config file to open it, and you can see that Debug is currently set to False. Now open the ASP.NET Website Administration tool, either by selecting ASP.NET Configuration from the Solution Explorer or from the Website menu. Click the Application tab and select Configure Debugging and Tracing. Click the Enable Debugging checkbox and now if you close the WSAT you'll see that the editor, the file has been edited outside of the source editor. Yes, you need to reload it and now debug is equal to true. So your web.config file has been updated. Now return to the, webs the WSAT. You click the back button to get back to the application tab and click the create application settings link. Enter server type for the name and staging for the value and hit the save button. You can either hit OK at this point or just simply close the browser. Once again, you have um, edited the file outside the source editor and you need to select Yes. Now you can see the changes that were made directly to the web.config file here. Now we're going to add a file to read from the web.config. So create a new web form. Name the new web form readconfig.aspx and click the Add button. Update the title element to read configuration files, or file I mean.
add a heading 1 value of reconfiguration file server type and select the literal off of the tool box and change the name of the literal to literal server type. Right click the page and select a view code to open the code page, the code behind page. Add the using statement using system.configuration to import the system.configuration namespace and then change the text value of the literal control to be equal to configuration manager dot app settings server type which is the one that we added previously in the web.config file. Now save all the files and view the page in the browser. Here's a quick tip when dealing with using statements. If I enter Configuration Manager and have not entered the appropriate using statement, I will receive the error saying that it is not, does not exist in the current context. If I right click it, I can select Resolve and I can see the appropriate using statement that I should use. If I select it, it is automatically added to the top.